Hello everyone, I'm uh, Thierry Lorient from AnswerGo Open Technologies. Um, the, the presentation of today <coughs> is actually a call for collaboration, but showing you where the status uh, is of ads and where we need some help, actually. Um, AnswerGo Privacy Beast was a, produ a product released uh, and certified by Cubes OS in July uh, 2019. Uh, trying to resolve the problem of being able to uh, distribute uh, Cubes OS pre-install without uh, reducing the security of the device. Uh, the reason why EDS is used is because there is uh, two different security that is added directly in the firmware. It gives us the possibility of knowing the state of the firmware by measuring the different parts. I will go through that later on. And we use uh, a generated key that is on a secure device and we put the public key inside of the firmware which permits us to have verified boot like the the binaries inside of slash boot which is not encrypted is actually verified upon each boot. Uh, the reason why the X230 is actually interesting is because we can actually uh, nurture uh, and tell me. Nurturing and deactivation is like a, a word that is really mixed up in the world right now because uh, nurturing means that all the parts are supposed like to be removed, which is not possible anymore. The status of Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge is that you can actually remove all the other modules but, but the bring up modules. So the parts that are necessary to actually start the main CPUs are still there, which is a result of 98 kilobytes of code that we still don't know what they do, but it's still there. Uh, so binary bub. Uh, free. Um, EDS is actually a payload of core boot uh, and what I did is actually implement a re-ownership process inside of EDS that permits us to, as an OEM, an OEM to actually cer certify, attest the state of the firmware and the boot status and actually ship a QR code to the customer and uh, the, the USB security key with the laptop so that the user receives it and be able like to verify by having already the picture taken that like uh, the, the firmware validation measures are there. And the security key is actually plugged on the laptop. It's Librem key uh, developed technology. So basically the, the laptop communicates with the keys and validates that the, the measurements are still there by flashing green or red if it's not uh, okay. So basically, uh, the process involves reowning all those components when the user receives it, so that the OEM is not, there is no trace of the OEM work after the reownership wizard. So uh, for those of you who don't know what EDS is, this is a quick uh, description that I've already come through. Um, Basically, the goal of Ed, EDS is not to be perfect, it's to actually add more security inside of the firmware. Uh, like I said earlier, by measuring it. So it's not verified boot, it's measured boot. Um, and the goal of it is, uh, it was based on uh, core, uh, core boot, an older version, and uh, patch were made to be able to actually modify, uh, modify the RAM stage to be uh, dependent on a TPM library that measures the modules prior of launching them. It permits remote attestation. Remote attestation is a, a mixed word there. Mixed in the sense that you verify the state on your phone with the QR code that you already scanned. So you have a TOTP, a code of six numbers that is re regenerated every 30 seconds. And if the codes on your phone and on the laptop is the, are the same, then you know that uh, it was not modified. Uh, Librem key, like I said earlier, use the same measurement from the TPM, but validates it on the USB key. So if it flash green, you know that it's good. If it flash red, it means that it was tempered with. Um, the verified boot integrity, uh, the part that the, the, the key actually is used, the USB key is used to sign every change boot configuration. So when adds boots, what it does is generate a, a digest of all the files that are present and it is signed with your, with your private key inside of your, uh, of your USB key. So when it boots, uh, adds just checks that the hash is signed by your public key that is inside of the ROM. So if something change, uh, you will be notified because you're the only one having the private key that match the public key that is inside of the ROM. Voila for that. This is what Ed, EDS does, basically. Uh, it takes like measurements and all of those PCRs, and those PCRs are used to, uh, to, to, me, to, to validate the integrity. 
So why I implemented uh, an ownership, re-ownership? Uh, because we want to have the firmware boot integrity validated. Uh, we want the USB security dongle that is shipped to the user to be uh, temporarily, temporarily owned by the OEM and re-owned by the user upon reception. And uh, the USB key should be provisioned uh, with secrets that are not the default ones. For example, if you buy a Librem key or an Etro key, the, the user pin will be 1234567, and the admin will be 1234567.8. So if, for some example, the device, the, the laptop, and the USB key are sent separately, but for some reason someone is able to get the, their end on the key and the laptop, there is a possibility of being able to modify the boot integrity, for example, and being able to use the key with the, the admin pin and resign the, the measurements, and there would be no security. So if we are able to provision those with random secrets, uh, even though uh, someone in the path would be able to get those two, uh, they won't be able to, uh, to measure uh, and verify. So all of those are covered already by the re-ownership. That gives something like that when you uh, boot the laptop at first. What you see here is that the, the time is supposed to be the same. You see the TOTP code that you can validate on your phone, which is supposed to be the one, the, the same. The HOTP code there is the result of the key being connected directly in the USB port. And the boot integrity is validated because the public signature that is inside of the ROM validated, validated that the boot, uh, the boot content was the same. So if you get those three right, you can continue the re-ownership. You know that the laptop was not modified in transit. Um, on that level, uh, okay, if you have like an uh, OSS is pre-installed, like how can you verify that it was not tempered with? The simplest solution that was uh, done is actually we, we create an OEM image that we clone on each of the laptop. The problem doing that is that the Lux encryption key would be the same on all the laptops. We don't want that because I could lend that key to any authority and it would be a massive problem. So uh, we want the initial Lux encryption key to be, uh, to be unique. We want the, the encryption password to be all, also different. And the last point is the integrity of the operating system uh, needs to be validated. We don't have the last one for the moment. Um, there is work being done on that. I will cover it later on. Uh, mainly, uh, Ed's lacks uh, LVM provisioning tools right now so that we have a possibility if we deploy uh, an OEM image to be able to decrypt the Lux container and, and measure the LVM so that we know that they have the same integrity as when it was shipped with. That's not done right now. It needs a bit more space inside of the ROM and work is being done on that right now. So the result when the user receives the laptop and types the Lux encryption key, which is the same that unlocks the SD card content, which is encrypted and which will be used to store the secrets of provisioning. It unlocks the, the two containers and actually re-encrypt the content of both disks. So the SD card, which is used to store the provision secret at the re-ownership is also encrypted. And uh, the hard drive is being re-encrypted re right now. So what you see here is the result of 35, 40 minutes later, all the computer uh, data is being uh, completely re-encrypted. So even if I was able to lend the keys to authorities, those keys don't exist anymore. They were changed completely. So here, uh, the slides are being uploaded. If you click on those two links, you have what it would be for an OEM to actually uh, re-own the laptop. And it's the same process that is being used for the user when he receives it basically having one passphrase to type and after that the I won't go through that but like the the, the menu is actually asking you generating like diceware passphrase of different lengths depending of the security needed for all the device uh, generated for you and you renew them until one flashes your head I come from the psychology background and the most basic problem for everyone is selecting good passphrase and good passwords so if you have something that actually uh, flabberglass your mind and you, you find it funny, you will remember it. And if you try to remember AX0, anyway, you're kind of security people. So good passphrase are, are the basic of everything. So the re-ownership takes that into matter and propose you like randomly words until some picks your mind. So who doesn't know what CubeOS is? 
Okay. Uh, we decided to ship, actually it was an inverse problem. The problem was on what computer we can use CubeOS securely. And the situation was resolved because well, Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge, there is, there is a debate on that, like, but Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge are the only last uh, x86 platform that are able to be uh, freed. There is no binary responsible for the hardware initialization, RAM initialization, graphic initialization. All of those that are normally initialized by blobs are native on that platform, thanks to core boot effort and reversing. So on what, lab, on what hardware you can actually run CubesOS securely, X, the X230 was one of the, the clear answers. So what I decided to do was to actually release a laptop having CubesOS pre-installed and voila. So what is CubesOS? CubesOS is an operating system based on virtualization that permits you to separate in a secluded environment what is all untrusted on your computer. So basically you would have like the network that is isolated in a virtual machine. All that is USB will be isolated in the machine. And each of your virtual machine that you pop up have, uh, have uh, routing vulnerabilities possible between the machine, but the rest of it is not connected. The rest of it doesn't have access to files that you, or vulnerabilities exposed by uh, a rubber ducky USB key that you would put on your computer that you don't trust. So basically, everything that is untrusted that comes from the external, until you do something really stupid, it won't affect you. CubesOS is also really interesting because all uh, attachment that you would open for, from emails or whatever, if you use Thunderbird, uh, if you double click on the attachment, it will open up in a disposable VM. A disposable VM is something that will just self-destruct after you saw the content. So if you clicked on a PDF or uh, f uh, an XLS document, uh, Word document or whatever, you may compromise your virtual machine that you're using, but once it's done, once you click that you finish the application, then the hypervisor will destroy your virtual machine and there won't be any trace of it. If you don't trust PDF, for example, you can also just click, right click on it and say convert it and that's it. It's, uh, it's done in a bitmap form of document that you can use to, uh, to share or, or whatever. Uh, same thing for devices that are coming from the outside. You have to explicitly say where you want that uh, device to be attached. So there is no stupid corruption that would happen to the super secure machine that you want to use. It won't have uh, networking if you don't want to. So you can have a vault that will contain all your passwords and everything. Uh, you're actually responsible to define the environments the way that you, uh, you need them to be. CubesOS comes with a couple of them, but that's irrelevant to this talk. The, the goal of it is to have an, a good hardware on which you can run a secure operating, operating system. So, uh, as of right now, there is um, not a lot of models that are supported under EDS uh, because of security consideration and because EDS is a, is a contributor-based project. But under development right now, because I, uh, I decided to go the path of Grant to be able to support more hardware, being able to support uh, remote management inside of CubesOS, because CubesOS is super nice, but most of you, if you don't know the operating system, you would be challenged by the idea of, okay, but will I receive help? Will I be able like, to deal with that if I come into a problem or whatever? So uh, I received a grant under NLNet to, uh, to uh, name accessible security. The goal of it is to, we have secure solution, but how can we make them accessible to the users that need it? My main focus is actually journalists, freedom defenders, and those kind of people. So in my trainings, when I was asked, okay, but how do I, where, on what hardware do I implement those super solution that you, you say? And there was no clear answer because if you don't have a, a, a trustable hardware, a trustable phone, or a trustable something, then everything can be hacked from the, 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 the simple uh, vulnerability. So, uh, under Grant right now is, the, is this right now, uh, 3 dev here under, it's supposed to, uh, we will know like in the, the next day, but there should not have any problem. There's gonna be a talk later on today about uh, FWUPD. The goal of it is to be able to have like simple firmware upgrades like we install any updates in our operating system. 
The problem with CubesOS, like I said super quickly, is that CubesOS is not meant to have network access by default. So if you have a part of your system, which is the hypervisor that has access to your hardware, it's not supposed to have access to the internet. So having updates for device under domain zero on the hypervisor requires some modifications so that the communication is made to download the updates and make them in available. Uh, so the goal of that is to have those updates available inside of Ed, so that the next time you reboot your laptop, Ed is also updatable. Um, like I introduced also, uh, having remote administration, because uh, the people that are the most at risk, let's say journalists or anyone being in remote countries and needing help right now, they are kind of left alone. The goal of the Cubes OS Wonix partnership is to be able to have uh, Tor hidden onion accessible remote administration so that when you need it, you can ask for support and copy paste a link uh, with a login and password and being able to have your admin VM or DAM0 being accessible to receive help remotely. Uh, the possibility of having safer uh, anonymization forensic resistant defaults because right now CubesOS doesn't come with Mac randomization. So if you're roaming around here with your cell phone right now, Okay, uh, you're leaving trace everywhere because your Mac is known by all those Wi-Fi stations and everything. So if you're a journalist or a freedom defender and your identity is at risk, you want those traces to not exist. Uh, same thing for our drive contents and everything. And the main problem that we have here because we try to go international is that there are so many keyboards that exist, but Ed support only US keyboards. So that's a challenge for, for going international. So, the help that we need right now uh, inside of EDS is a better reproducibility because EDS motto is being able to produce the same exact image wherever you, you build it across different OS build systems and everything. We need help of that. If here there's people working in a continuous integration environment and are able to give a bit of help, that would be amazing. Uh, EDS needs uh, a bit more involvement. Um, and the main cue that I, it's not really related to firmware development right now, but we, we need an alternative to x86 so that we don't have blobs in our hardware. It's really a constraint that should be addressed by firmware developers. And uh, voila. And the goal of all of this, because I'm doing this since six, six months right now, is that every time that we ship a laptop, it, it goes through customs and everything. So what we need right now is like uh, reprogrammers around the world that are ready to do exactly the same part of job that I'm doing, but in different countries, so that laptops don't go across borders that are made locally. And people that are interesting, uh, interested in joining the adventure of making uh, hardware more secure. Um, here for, core, for uh, firmware developers, uh, there is PowerPC uh, needed work inside of Coreboot. So if you are willing to join the adventure of porting Coreboot to, uh, to PowerPC, it would be amazing. Uh, those are tasks that I need to do right now because one of the most problems that arrive like in my situation is a client saying, okay, but I lost my USB key. And when you lose your USB security key that is made like to sign the configuration and everything, it means that you have to buy another one and re-own the key, generate new keys and everything because the keys are inside of the USB device. So it's not copy, uh, copy, uh, copyable. So the solution around that would be to use ads to, gener to generate those key pairs, save them inside of a Lux encrypted key, which, uh, yeah, which I already resolve. It's just like coding stuff that I will resolve in the next couple of weeks. And voila, so Insurgo is now incorporated. Uh, like I said, we need reprogrammers. Uh, there is a direct sourcing that is available to partners around the, the world that want to join the adventure. Uh, training is provider. My background is security trainer, so I would be more than willing like to jump in the adventure and make this go like uh, broader. Um, and uh, this is uh, this is what I what, uh, what what I want like to promote is that uh, I've been in this adventure like for a couple of months right now. I did a lot of uh, attempts and funding efforts. This is nice, this is, uh, this is working, but it's complicated because of the add-in management that is there. So uh, one InsurGo uh, just created is InsurGo initiative at Open Collective. And every time that a laptop will be bought from us or any partners that, that is linked to us, 25% of the net profit will be donated inside of Open Collective. 
Open Collective is what is used by CubesOS and others. It's actually just an open book saying what money comes in and where it goes out. So the goal of this would be to actually be able to uh, pay for development outside of those funds so that if, if there is an issue that you can actually deal with, you can say, okay, it will take like um, 30 hours to resolve this. I would need like $5,000 and we can come with like a, an arrangement of what task needs to be done and when it's going to be paid. That's how funding works. Uh, you have to provide work, uh, proof of work, and the fundings are released on each task that are completed. Voila. Thank you. Yes. was the first one to actually import uh, Blackbird, uh, Talos 2, uh, Blackbird in uh, Europe uh, last year. Uh, so the problem is that it's not something that Power 9 in general will not be mass use. It's price, it's availability, it's distribution, but the effort is meaningful. Yeah. So I, I just would like to hear how do you think you can enable, if someone wants to help you, to give him hardware to work with that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and <laughs> really quick, the, 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 uh, really quick, how can we make like involvement like to, to make the work? Uh, basically, Raptor Engineering for PowerPC. The question was, how can we make PowerPC development like work if hardware is not available? That's it? Yeah, first, and then if, if it is, how, you know, you need adoption to find problems, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, basically, uh, Raptor Engineering is willing to provide hardware for all the developers awesome. that would work on that. Uh, the, the contract would be like a code needs to be released and be put upstream yeah. to compensate for the hardware enablement that they call. That's first. Uh, the second one is that the hardware is known to work. They received Respect Your Freedom certification uh, three months ago, I think, two months ago. So basically, it's the first platform that respects your freedom since uh, Libreboot, Minifree, X200, 200. So basically, the hardware is performant. Uh, they have a, a plan of releasing a laptop really soon. Yeah. So the question is, how can we manage to have all the stack available so that both arrive at the same time? I, I understand your, your reflex of, okay, but we need needs, but the need will arise. Yeah. So the question right now, and if you click on the link there, uh, there is a bounty for Cubes OS. Okay. Uh, and if people here are Xen developers, uh, the Bunty is really interesting if you can actually pro propose code to yeah, have Xen support or KVM or... I, I got the, 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 the Talos 2 and the 2 Blackbirds for the same reason, to use them as a, yeah. for a multi-station to verify yeah. other machines. The, so when you make your call for collaboration, I actually would like to say awesome because I'm trying to Contact do something me. similar. Contact uh, me. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a, a developer-friendly trusted computing platform. I just want to say that tomorrow we'll do a birth of feather session okay. it's for anyone interesting, especially in remote station uh, of different networks and, and platforms. And uh, it will be in H3242 at uh, 2.30. Write me an email. I, I, yeah, I just, yeah, I'm just saying for everyone because your call for collaboration really makes sense to me. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, you talked about... Uh, but... Oh, the question is, what are the challenge to develop a core boot version for PowerPC? No, not for PowerPC, just for heads. Ah, oh, heads. Uh, re right now, the work is done by Nine Element under Grant. Uh, the basic problem is just to have uh, vBoot plus measured boot. That's kind of the new standard inside of, uh, of core boot. The problem was that the support was not made properly for Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge. So... It needs to be upstream first inside of core boot, and after that we will be able to uh, make the merge. But it's supposed to happen in the next uh, month or month and a half. They are working on it right now. And in, in that design, uh, what happens when you need to uh, upgrade the kernel? You need to reown the uh, whole system, what happens? Okay, the question is what happens when you upgrade the operating system? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, what happens actually? When you sign your boot configuration, you're actually selecting a default boot configuration. 
So what it means is that your grub, xen, uh, kernel, and in ETRD will be uh, measured. And the digest like uh, the digest like uh, takes takes that into consideration. So when you upgrade, all of those will change at the same time. So as actually pops up and asks you like if you are the origin of those change. If you are, you sign. If you don't, you inspect. One question or no? No. One short. Let's say only one short question or one short. Who is short? Short. We have an incoming reception, so it's uh, uh, not yet. Not yet. Uh, the question was: Is there any interception story that happened? Uh, not yet. Uh, not when? That you know. No, but <laughs> not that I know. Yeah, but again, like uh, with all the measurements that are there, uh, it's we put like glitter under with like uh, nail polish under the main screw. Uh, we send a picture of that uh, glitter to the customer, the QR code, blah blah blah. So to be able to travel here would be a better place than me to answer like what are exactly the, the use case that would be needed to actually be able to compromise the firmware, have the measurements being done like inside that would match the QR code, match the, 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 the challenge version inside of your USB key and everything. I don't come up with a way, but there's possibly a way. And if you're a 3 billion targeted user, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> Thank you, Thierry. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Well